Hey, what's good, YouTube? My name is Dewan. So in my last video on how to create a ping verification script by using Python, I got a lot of good reviews and a lot of questions. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to continue on that video by adding some more functionality to our script. Some of those functionalities will be opening files, saving to files, adjusting our script to make sure it functions the way it's supposed to. And then we'll also talk about how I'm leveraging PowerShell to run my Python scripts. So before we continue, I want to answer a couple questions from people that I got down in the comments. As we go through these videos, feel free to like, share these videos, and leave comments in the comment section below because I will answer them in the next video. We're doing this daily. I hope you are already. Now let's get to the first question from Jair. Jair says, hello, Dewan. Simply demonstrated, definitely useful and awesome. I would like to take a step back and understand the context of what needs to be done before creating a script. For example, the PC you are executing the script needs to be in a certain network. Does it need internet access? This is pure Python running in ICMP test, right? So I guess there is no communication with network devices in the network. Definitely looking forward to more daily automation examples, my friend. Thanks, man. I appreciate your question. Hopefully I didn't mess your name up. Okay, so to answer your first question, using a ping verification script is often very useful when you're automating network devices. In one of my positions, when I first started using ping verification scripts, I would test to verify if a riverbed was up. If the riverbed was up, then I would continue on with the execution of my script. If not, I would say fail, save it in the document, and move on to the next riverbed in the network. In this video, we will be pinging a full slash 24 in the network, so you'll see actually how this works, how it looks on some live routers. I'm excited to get to this, so I really do appreciate your questions. Hopefully, I answer them all. Um, if you got more, like I said, leave them in the comment section below. The next question is from Adam, and his... His wasn't really a question. It was really more pointing out something. What he mentioned in here, he's talking about my ICMP responses, the way I wrote my script before, and we'll get to it here. It doesn't always respond the way we expect it. For example, in my previous video, what I would look check for was receive for, and then I would say if the device is up but that isn't always correct. As you can see, the response or the reply from the router is destination host unreasonable. So that really isn't a valid test, a more valid test to be a little more granular in my search. So what I decided to do, which I'll show you here, not only do I test that I'm receiving the amount of packets that I expect, but I'm also gonna check for approximate because if approximate is in there, that means the ping has been successful. So before we continue, I need to create a text file in order to output our results to file. So the first thing we're going to do is check the directory to see if I have this text file. Okay, it's not here, so we're going to create it by using the new item command, new item, and then we're going to name this results.txt. CLS to clear the screen, dir. And as you can see, we have our new text document here, and there's nothing inside of that document. Now that we do this, let's go ahead and get in Python. Now, if you remember in our last video, we did import OS. Import OS allows us to run commands in our Windows operating system, so CMD commands, not PowerShell commands, but CMD commands right here inside of PowerShell. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open our file that we just created, but we're going to open it in a variable. So that variable is going to be called results file. And then we're going to open it and we want to verify that we can write to it. So if we were going to import text from the file, we will use comma R 
and this will import the file into our variable but what we want to do is open the file to write to this file you can append to this file as well but in this video we're going to go ahead and just write okay the next thing we're going to do is create our list for our IP addresses we're not going to put IP addresses in this list this time it's just going to be an open list so IP list with open brackets and that's a list with nothing in it you can check the length of that list so if you go length and then IP list and that lets you know there's no items in this array now we have that we created our list we have our results file the next thing we I want to do to make this a little more advanced in this video is to create a range of IP addresses that we will ping this range I would like to go from um, 192.168.1 dot one to 255 so the entire subnet that we have available in this slash 24 so the first thing we're going to do is create a for loop a lot of you mentioned that you have problem with loops loops are not that difficult once you practice them so here I'm saying for IP in range we're using the range function to go from 1 to 255 but we're going to say 256 but as you'll see it'll stop at 255 and what we want to do is append to our IP address list so the way we're going to do that is and this is going to be really cool I think you I think you all are gonna like this. Say IP. Looks like our loop completed. Let's check the length of our list again. Boom. And as you can see, now we have 255 items in there. If I want to just check one IP address in this list, we could go IP list. And we're gonna check the first item in the array. And as you can see, it's one IP address. Now let's check the last item in the array, which is 255 or 254. Boom, 255. So we got a total of 255 items in this array, starting with zero. All of this code will be on my GitHub. So if you're lost, you're a little confused, check my GitHub. It will have documentation and all that good stuff. So the next thing we need to do, now that we have our list of IP addresses, we need to create our ping script and then output our results to our results file in order to do that we have to create another loop as you can see before we use the range command for a range of numbers this time we're going to do a range within that IP list that we created just like in our last video so for that we're just going to go through just like we did in the last video for IP in IP list colon we want to come down here and we'll do our ping now one thing I want to do is because what's going to happen is it's going to take a really long time to run this script if I do four pings so I'm just going to do one ping to my devices to see if it's up or down so we're going to do response equals let me move that out the way os dot popin popin and then we'll do an f string and we'll ping and we'll do ip again and we're going to use n one so we're just sending one ping just to verify if the device is up and it returns approximate and all that good stuff but we'll get to that point in a minute so we're going to read it the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the results and write them to a file if it's successful so we need to create an if statement so if received equals one and 
So this conditional statement has two conditions. It need to say received equals one, and it needs to have approximate in that response. So before we just use received equal four, but to make sure that our pain results are what we expect, we're going to get a little more granular this time. So we're going to use approximate. in response boom now if it's good we need to take those results and put them in our file write them to our file at this point we're writing everything to our file so write file and we're using an F string just like we did last time rather than printing it to the screen we're going to write it to our file and we're going to say up and then IP with the F string ping successful and we need to concatenate this string to be able to create a new line because if you don't do this backslash in what's going to happen is it's going to take all your results and put them on the same line so by concatenating here this string result plus this backslash in what that says is new line so we'll do that on this result and we need to do our else statement one, two, three, four, else. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And results. Let's just do an up arrow and let's just say down here. And this happens fast. Like once I do this, it's going to hang for a minute. And then next thing you know, it's, it's done. Pain. Unsuccessful, new line. And it's going to go down. Look, and this is letting it know that it's doing what it's supposed to do. This is putting it all to the file. It's not printing it to the screen, but it's letting us know that it's executing these pings. And one of the things that I should have did was I should have made sure one of my interfaces is down. Yeah, we'll have to run it again. We'll run it one more time just to verify that it works how it's supposed to work, but we'll do it real fast. And so now the last thing we need to do is close our results file. So results file dot close. And this closes our file. Now let's check the status of our text document. So we'll exit out of Python. We'll do and we'll do a dir and what we want to do is open our results file so we'll cat we'll read it right here in pi powershell so results dot text and as you can see these are all our pings they're all up and they're all successful all of them successful from 1 to 255 these are all pings and if you don't believe we're actually pinging, let me show you something. So, again, the reason why I like line by line execution, before we do our final test and I close, I shut down some interfaces, I want to show you something. So, right here, I imported OS. We're back in Python. The cool thing, the reason why I like using this, this um, module, this library so much is, check this out. So, right here in PowerShell, I can clear my screen. Boom, and we're back up to here. So again, I'll do it again. Import OS, clear my screen, just like that. I love using Python in PowerShell. Like I love it. It makes it so easy, so clean, so, so neat. So check this out. We're going to go back and we're gonna do this entire script one more time. And all I'm gonna do is use the up arrow so we need to import OS so you, I just want you to see the entire script so we'll fast forward through this too
Okay. Before we continue, I need to go to my router and I want to shut down some interfaces so you can just see that these pings are actually legit. So let's go over here to my router. Let me pull up secure CRT. If I do a show IP route, you can see my routes are all here. If I do a show IP interface brief, these interfaces are on this device. So what I want to do is shut down some of these interfaces. So let's go and let's go interface LO1, no shut. We're just going to go to here and shut down random ones. <laughs> I'm doing no shut. I need to be doing shut. As you can see, it's late in the month, but I'm going hard for y'all. Let's try this again. Shut. Not no shut. We're, see? I make mistakes too. We all make mistakes out here. All right. And I'm leaving this in the video. So 35. Let's go shut. Let's go 77. Shut. Oh yeah, now we now you see the moon face is shutting. And let's go like a hundred something. Shut. And these are all loop back interfaces that I have on my router. And I shut all these down. That's enough. Alright, so now that we have all these interfaces shut down, we need to go back and execute our script and see what happens. Let's go. There we go. Here we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. That the see this this the type of John that gets me excited. Let's go, let's go. All right, we're here, we're here now. So let's close our results file real quick. Results file dot close. Boom. Let's exit. And now let's clear the screen and let's make sure y'all can see this. All right, so what we're going to do is open our results file and look at the results. All right, so pain unsuccessful down. And remember, 100, 110 should be 80, 77 should be in the 30 something down. And as you can see, these is real pain. Shut down the interface, pain script, output to file, made it happen. Okay, so. Our script was successful. I want to give you a challenge. As you can see in this ping results file, we have successful pings and unsuccessful pings. What I want to do is challenge you to go to my GitHub, clone this repo, download this repo, fork this repo, whatever you need to do to make it happen. I want to challenge you to only output the failed pings to the results.txt, meaning only output this else statement to this results.txt. I think I gave you too much information. I gave you a clue right there on what you need to do. But either way, if you are successful in making that happen, let me know that you made it happen in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit it with a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video but got questions, let me know in the comment section below. You know it's lab every day, all day, every day. 2020, we're going hard. Much love, Daily Python, it's for you. Peace.